Okay, so this tutorial is going to get us go, um, going through the use of the make 2D commands that we can set up for our watercolor. Alright, and so what we're going to do is, uh, I've taken Abby's project here, and that's just because she, the way that she sent it to me was already sort of exploded out, and so we can go ahead and get a pretty easy axon, axonometric view out of that. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is I'm just going to reorient this for our view. Oh, and it looks like I forgot the to unlock the layer for her rubber band here. We rotate. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're going to end up doing an axon of this um, or a paraline drawing. And so when we're in, I'm just going to go ahead and reset the viewports here uh, from her file. So from a perspective, um, if we shade this. Um, there's some foreshortening, so we can't measure do a measure drawing on this. Um, this command will work just fine for this though. Uh, so say if we come over here and that's the thing that we want to make use this command for. If we just type make 2D, you can see that up in the command line up here. That's going to ask us some questions. Um, you, first thing, you want to do the current view, and then you want to show hidden lines uh, or not, depending on what it is you're trying to do. You can always toggle them off though um, once we have it in there. Uh, so we just hit OK. And it's going to produce, if we look on our plan here, a line drawing for this. And this looks a little disheveled, uh, and I'll show you how we can use that here in a second. But if we turn off the hidden lines, uh, you can see it gives us a nice clean line drawing of all of our edges. Okay, and so you can do a lot with this. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take it to the CNC mill. Uh, to get into an axonometric view, all you need to do is just use the orbit tool in a parallel, paraline view, or an orthographic view, and it'll automatically turn it into axon. Uh, and so the difference obviously being we have perspective that has foreshortening, um, and paraline drawings do not. And so I'm going to go ahead and just pull this out a little bit more, so we can get a nice exploded axon out of this. And I'm being very arbitrary, you can obviously be more precise when you're going through and doing this for yourself. So we'll take our file here, and we can just shade this until we get it to be about where we want it to be. Okay. All right. And so then what we're going to do? We'll just take this and select it, and then make 2D. And now we have our line diagram. Okay. Now, uh, from here, what we need to do is uh, for the watercolor color project, bleh, for the watercolor portion of this, we need to size our paper. And so, first thing we need to do is make sure our units are in the appropriate scale here. So, I'll click the cogwheel or just type options. And then, if you go to units, you can see that we're in inches, which is perfect. And so, then we're going to draw the paper size that we purchased here. And I have a 24 by 18 sheet of paper. So, that will be my work envelope or area. And then I can just place this in here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and scale that up. That was a little bit too big. So this is essentially all you guys need to do for the um, the watercolor stuff. Because so what I'll do is I'll reorganize everything and reorient um, all of the views. Um, but what I do want to go through and do that real quick is, and I'll, I'll show you, I'm going to just move this off to the side. One other diagramming technique that you guys can use uh, with this is we go out here and then do uh, make 2D. Hit OK. And then we can extract, if we just put, use the command mesh outline, that'll give us the outline. You can see this in purple, or sorry, magenta out here, and the edges. Uh, if we do make 2D of that selection, once we do that, what that will do is that'll give us um, an edge selection around our make 2D command. So we'll have a bunch of a nice border that we can start to control in Illustrator. Okay? And so uh, I'm showing you guys this. Um, this is all you really need to do for IA, the, the 320 class, but uh, for the grad students that are interested in doing some of the diagramming in Illustrator, 
um, or for those of you guys who are interested in doing some diagrams in Illustrator for your portfolios, uh, we can go ahead and I'm going to show you how to, how to do that as well. So we type export and we're going to go to, I'll just toss this on the desktop, call this uh, AviR, and we'll save this out as an Illustrator file. And just hit save. And we can set this at a scale. Uh, and right now, I believe it's, uh, I, I don't think it's actually at a scale right now. I didn't measure anything. Uh, not that that would be impossible to do, but I didn't. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we don't need the viewport boundary. And we'll just do this one to one. Okay. And so then I'll hop over into Illustrator and hit Control O. step here. I'm going to turn on our hidden lens because we want to be able to see those. Let me show you what I'm doing here. So you can see it's an Illustrator file, file type. Yes, we want to replace it. One to one. Okay. Alright, so then we'll hop over here. Control O. Open this up, and there's our line drawing. It looks pretty crappy, right? Uh, so we're gonna just do, and I'm just gonna select all, and I'm gonna scale it down. If you hold Shift, it'll do it at the right proportion. And we can come over here and move that into the center. All right. Now we're gonna do some selecting. So we'll, I've selected one of those white lines, and you can see down here in the swatch um, that this is gonna be white. Uh, and then I can use some of the tools in Illustrator to select the same stroke color. So now I have all of the white lines selected. And then we can do some nice little uh, diagram here. So now this is gray, and I'm going to drop the line weight down to like 0.25. I'm going to set this as a dash line, and I like a two-point dash line. Well, I deselect that. Now you can see all of those sort of hidden geometries are now these nice dashed lines for a technical drawing. So then, uh, next step here, I'm going to go ahead and select one of the black lines. And check your swatch to make sure you have one of those. And select same stroke color. And then I'm going to hold shift um, so that I can deselect that outer border. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this to 0.5. And I can come over here. I'm just going to delete that extra line that I had. Now I'm going to select my border here. And this is where I can come in here and make this look really nice. Okay. Maybe three point is a little bit heavy. Do two. Alright. And then we have other. If we come over here, we can see. When we did that command, we actually did created a couple of these guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these guys, and we'll set this to 2 as well. here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select that border, select same line stroke weight, and then I'm going to give these a fill. And the reason I'm going to do that is then what we can do is we draw a box here. Oops. I'm going to use your layers. We'll lock these up. We'll click on that swatch and then we can change the color. And give that a nice backdrop there. I'm not sure what this guy's doing over here floating around. So unlock these. 
V is your home. Looks like we got some floating geometries here, but just delete those out. And actually, let's not give this a fill. later but essentially what you could do is you could set this up so that um, there would be a transparency um, and I don't feel like going into this too long because this is already running longer than I had wanted it to uh, but this will create a nice vector line work for you guys uh, as you guys are going through and doing your work all right